Hey everybody, welcome to another One Gauge video. I've got something different for you um, in this video. This is a kind of a review and an overview of these go-karts that I purchased from China in the spring of 2024. It took them about three months to arrive to my home in the US. And I just wanted to give an overview of the products, um, show some assembly instructions in case you're thinking about purchasing one yourself. They're pretty easy to put together. And then, of course, an overview and kind of a, re a review of my thoughts on these carts. Of course, we'll, we'll be doing some things with gauges on these, um, probably add some sort of track and lap timing just for fun. Um, and I'll probably de detail that in future videos. So quick walk around of these go-karts. This is the adult version. Um, it's got a 270cc motor, full front and rear spring suspension. Um, the steering rack, very sensitive. Um, that could be a pro or a con, I guess, depending on, on the way that you drive and the terrain. But uh, overall, I've been really impressed with the build quality. Um, they seem like really solid single-seater off-road carts. Um, it's been a lot of fun for myself and, and my family as, as we've ridden around our rather bumpy yard. So it does include a kill switch there on the center of the column um, for easy shutoff. Um, the engine so far, one pull to start, really, really easy. Um, and we did we did get a we did opt for the wet clutch with these. The roll cage is optional, um, and then yeah, overall very happy with these so far. At this point, I'm going to switch over to a detailed overview of assembly. Uh, if that's not something you're interested in, feel free to skip to the end of the video where I'll spend some time um, driving and talking a little bit more about the um, driving experience of the cart. The tools you'll need for the job are primarily a box cutter or something to open the boxes with. You'll want some kind of snips or scissors to be able to cut the zip ties um, and trim the zip ties that you put on. Then you're going to need at least a 10, a 12, and a 14 millimeter uh, wrench or equivalent. Of course, um, these gear ratchet wrenches work great. A 6 millimeter hex to be able to tighten the roll cage screws if you purchase the roll cage. This is a 5 8 inch socket. You'll need that or a wrench. And there's an 11 16 those are for the large uh, bolts that hold the rear frame um, to the middle section then a one inch wrench or an adjustable wrench for the two nuts that hold on the front section to the middle section then this was my solution for the seat bolts a 5 16 inch socket with a screwdriver to be able to get down in the little hole there and on the back side of that to 10 millimeter and then of course a funnel or something to fill up um, the go-kart with oil. All right so we're going to start off with uh, opening the box. Um, these boxes are pretty heavy so you probably will need some help um, getting them into your shop or unloading them or whatever but once you open it up you'll see everything is pretty well packaged. Um, a lot of it's zip tied together so you're going to have to cut those zip ties and then at least in my case the frame was all um, assembled using these 10 millimeter bolts and the nuts um, were 14 millimeters. So here you can see I'm just getting everything unscrewed, uh, taking off kind of the, the top layer of the packaging, the box, um, and the kind of metal cage that it comes in. Once you get that open, um, you can start cutting these zip ties and pulling some of the parts out of the, um, out of the assembly. Just make sure you have plenty of room to work uh, you do need to be able to spread out the parts and then and then put them all together. So here I'm just taking apart the rest of the metal framing so that I can easily remove each of the three major portions of the go-kart. The go-kart does come with a user manual for both the cart itself and for the engine. These black caps for the tires, a seat belt, some zip ties. It does come with a toolkit, so a lot of the tools that I mentioned earlier will be duplicated in this kit. Uh, you never know what these things will come with, so I always recommend having your own tools on hand just in case. So at this point, putting on the gas cap, making sure that no um, dirt gets into the, into the gas tank, and then um, pulling off kind of that rear end. The, the cart comes in three main pieces. This middle piece is held in place by two bolts, and you're going to reuse those bolts to be able to, um, to be able to attach the rear end onto the center section. The center section has two large nuts um, shown here. The they've got what's basically a long bolt bolted or welded to the front of the center section that goes through the front section, and then those two large nuts, the one-inch nuts, are used to attach the front to the center. 
and then the rear end has really in total four bolts so two larger ones that uses that 5 8 and 11 16 that I showed you earlier and then two smaller ones I believe it's a 10 millimeter and a 12 millimeter um, that hold the um, the shocks in place so total of four bolts that hold the rear end to the center section now to the steering column um, opening it up the there are two separate mounts for the steering column um, the bolts are already fastened through the sections um, there's right here you can see I'm undoing one of them and then the second and then the steering shaft itself slides into this uh, front section and then there's a bolt that's included on the steering column that uh, locks it in place here I am unwinding and routing the brake caliper so it is a uh, a liquid based um, caliper so it's not mechanical it is a uh, hydraulic so pretty simple the caliper runs back to the rear axle there's a spacer that holds the um, the pads apart so you basically just slide the caliper over the um, rear brake disc and then the two bolts bolt through um, the mounting plate and into the caliper itself and that's just what holds the caliper on and then you can of course route your um, hydraulic line and then it makes sense to probably do the hydraulic line and the uh, gas accelerator cable line and the emergency cutoff switch all at the same time I didn't do that here you'll see me here in a second um, route those as well so just attaching and adjusting um, the steering column there is some adjustment built in you're able to kind of move that center uh, center piece up and down a little bit to slightly change the height of the steering wheel but there's not a ton of adjustment not really much you need either it, it's kind of a good central position so just um, attaching and kind of tightening some of those bolts as well as the bolt that holds on the reservoir for the um, hydraulic brake fluid um, tightening that up and then here you can see me routing the accelerator cable and the emergency shutoff switch from the back of the cart up to the front again relatively simple the accelerator cable uh, just has two nuts you unscrew the first nut the front nut and then put it through the uh, the little bracket that's welded to the frame and then you can attach the cable that goes onto the gas pedal and of course you can adjust um, how quickly the pedal starts pulling by adjusting the depth of the cable itself using the two different nuts so routing these cables now just using the provided zip ties that they included um, zip tying it to the frame I like to keep it on the inside of the frame that way I don't have to worry about anything um, hitting the cables and it, it made it a little bit easier the kind of bottom diamond plate style plate that's on the bottom of the cart is very tight against the frame itself so now adding the optional roll cage I purchased these for all the carts just for added safety uh, honestly not super impressed with the quality of these roll cages the metal is pretty thin um, you know I think it'll work fine in a kind of low speed slow rollover but if you were to get in a, a pretty good accident then I'm not sure how much these would do um, it's possible I may make my own roll cage in the future um, using some tubing but for now I think these are sufficient I really haven't seen any, any propensity of these carts to roll over the width is pretty good um, so at this point it's time to add oil to both the wet clutch since I opted for that as well as the engine so the instructions that are included with the engine will give you your give you your fluid capacity there are different capacities based on the size of the motors since this is kind of the larger class of motor it requires uh, about a liter of oil for the uh, for the main motor which is what I'm pouring in here and then what I just poured in a second ago was the wet clutch fluid using that gray drain plug and that required about half a liter of oil so um, all in total about a liter and a half of oil for the the whole cart at this point uh, installing the seat belt kind of a pain because it's a little difficult to get to the bolts that are that are inside the seat they're recessed and so what I did is I used a 5 16th 
a very small bit and a screwdriver to be able to, to do that. So here it's important, the top gray lever is your choke, the bottom one is your gas, the, there's an on and off for your fuel flow, and the choke you just want to turn to that second, um, kind of pull it back towards you, that way the choke is engaged. Make sure, this is really critical and something that took me a while to figure out, make sure that the kill switch is set to off and that the switch on the rear of the motor is set to on. So just after a couple starts here, got it running and moving the choke lever back forward so it matches where the fuel lever is. And at this point, I just let it warm up for a minute and then it's ready to go. Here I did have some rattling from the cover that goes over the chain. It's something that I've since adjusted and it's not really been an issue. Um, just one of those small out of the box things that does take some adjustment sometimes. All right, so now that we've got it driving, what is it like to drive? Um, my review is pretty good. I think overall it's a, it's a good experience. It's a little rough, a little bumpy, but that's mostly because of our yard. You know, we don't have a very smooth lawn mowing experience either so I didn't expect it to be a super smooth go-kart ride. The suspension does help a little bit. It's not fantastic but it's adequate. Uh, you know everything else about it is is exactly what you would expect. The speed somewhere between 20-30 miles per hour or so probably more than enough for these especially on the kids cart. Um, I uh, turned the throttle down a little bit, used the throttle adjustment screw to make sure to limit the speed on those. Um, but on this kind of terrain, as bumpy as it is, I don't. I'm, I haven't been driving nearly the max speed of these things, so uh, more than adequate there. the The steering is very touchy, a little twitchy, especially over the bumps. I may do something in the future to try to try to change the gearing of that if it's possible. Um, it's fine. It, it's just you really don't have very much steering feel at all because of the way um, that they have it set up with the um, the gearing. So. You know, overall, really good experience. Build quality seems pretty solid. The only issues that we've had was uh, one of the frames did break. Um, Use some, some glue and may weld that in the future, but the metal is pretty thin. So it, that might be something I consider um, building myself someday out of some tubing if possible. Um, the kill switches on both the kids' carts, the wiring broke just because the kill switch is mounted on the steering wheel instead of on that center column piece. Um, so there's some stress that's put on those wires. I, I plan on resoldering and lengthening those in the future. Um, but over, you know, the main body of the cart, the engines, everything, everything seems really solid. Um, even as, as bumpy as, as we've been driving them and we've put a few hours on them now and, and overall have been very happy with them. So this is the end of my review. Uh, if you have any questions, you can always feel free to reach out to us at one gauge. Um, of course, we'll have some digital gauge um, fun and experiments in the future with these, and, and I'll be posting those up here on YouTube as well. So appreciate you tuning in.